Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to explain about timer in Unified Diagnostic Service. So I'll just give a brief intro about timers in UDS. Timers are the mechanism to manage time-based operation and response during diagnostics communication between vehicle issues and diagnostic tool. Say for example, if here you can consider the diagnostic tool Here you can consider the ECU, car's ECU or vehicle's ECU. So usually the diagnostics communication is the communication between the DAG tool or tester to the ECU. So the communication will be two way, right? So here what they try to uh, give the explanation on the timers is there is a time difference between the communication on the diagnostic tool to the ECU. All right. So UDS is a standard. Yes, it's a ISO 14229 for the vehicle diagnostics used for tasks such as reading DTCs. Yes, this is what we are doing, reading DTCs, reprogramming or reading um, the data on the ECU. So timers ensure that these tasks follow correct timing. Say for example, if a diagnostic tester is reading would like to read the ECU's DTC. So if he sent 190208, he expect the response should be within some XX milliseconds. All right. So here the XX is also a timer. So ISO has specified that this should be within some time. And again, it's a OEM and a supplier wish to change the timer based on their need. That also ISO is, allows them to use their modifications. So here we'll be seeing two timers, especially P2 and P2 star. So these are all the two timers are being used widely in UDS and it's, it's a, one of the uh, no basic timer. So let's give a quick intro. I'll just explain it. Then we'll uh, check about the content. Again, this is a DAG tool or tester. So ECU here. All right. So what is P2 timer? P2 timer is a timer where the tester sends the request and the ECU responds with some time. So this response time should be within some XX millisecond. So this XX is a P2 timer. All right. Usually most of the in most of the cases, uh, ISO also recommends to use 50 MS 50 milliseconds in the default session or no, it is on or X or uh, no not non default session in no sorry in, in non default session it can be anything and in the diagnostic default session it can be of 50 ms and in non default session it can be reduced to some even 30 40 anything all right so this is the p2 timer so let's read out this this is the time allocated for the ec to respond to diag service request so this is the time to respond when a direct tool sends a request, the ECU must respond within the P2 timer. If ECU doesn't respond, the direct tool may assume that the request is failed. All right. So if you are not getting your response, then it may assume that the response is the request is failed. The request not reached to the ECU. The default P2 timer is often around 50 MS, but it can vary depending on the service on the ECU. All right. Then what is P2 star? So P2 star is an extended version of the P2 timer. Let's read out this. This timer is used in situation where the ECU need more time to process the request. See here we have mentioned 50 MS. All right. So there is some exceptions where ECU needs some time to process the data. Say for example, if you are reading some uh, you know calibration data of the camera sensor or sorry, uh, calibration date of the camera or any sensor 
uh, if ECU needs some time to process, say for example, two seconds to transfer, sorry, to process the uh, the particular data and to give the response, it needs two seconds. All right, so just assume so two second is a uh, is a standard time for doing such operation to or to recollect the data. So ECU obviously can't able to send before 50 ms. So what we'll do? P2 start timer comes into picture. So of course it will it will just uh, it will not receive within P2 timer, but it will wait again for P2 start timer. So P2 start is if it is two seconds then within two seconds you can get this data whatever that data it is all right see this is the timer used in the situation where the ECU need more time to process the request example when executing more complex task it's essentially an extended version of the p2 timer if the ECU cannot respond within the regular p2 time it may in it may inform the diagnostic tool to use the p2 star and p2 star timer is usually longer such as uh, five seconds that is 5000 ms or more to accommodate the complex operation all right so that's all about this video on p2 and p2 star maybe in upcoming videos we'll have a, a p4 timer and s3 timer and t1 to t5 even t8 we'll see all these concepts in our upcoming videos all right i hope it would be helpful for some somebody yes um, and we'll get back to you in the next video until then bye take care